Well, Happy New Year's, my friends. It's the first day of 2021. Holy moly. And I got a fresh new haircut, like all of it completely gone. <laughs> it always grows back, right? So, hey, let's start out the new year by taking our newfound knowledge on intermolecular forces and applying it to liquid properties. We're gonna get into some solid properties later. So we'll focus on liquids first and then solids. We did gases last semester, right? In first semester general chemistry, because we didn't have to worry about intermolecular forces. Yay, with the ideal gas law. But for condensed phases like liquids and solids, we cannot ignore those intermolecular forces that cause, right? It, it, it affects the melting and boiling points enough where they are liquids or solids at room temperature. Uh-oh. So we're not going to do too much math with these, right? <laughs> we're not going to have like an ideal gas equation for liquids. But what I want to do is look at just a few token liquid properties. Uh, but I, I want to qualitatively think about like, hey, if I have this species and this species, which would have the the stronger, the, the higher viscosity or, or you know, the higher surface tension. So we're going to look at different types. I'll list those up on the board in a little bit. But what I want to do is say, hey, what questions are we going to ask ourselves? And what factors do we need to think about to qualitatively analyze this, right? If we're comparing the properties of two different liquids. So first and foremost, what are the intermolecular forces of that particular liquid? Does it have hydrogen bonding? Is it really big with lots of electrons with strong Lund dispersion forces, right? Are they ions? Woo, right? So, and we can, we can rank the different intermolecular force strengths fairly well. Okay. So that's going to be a huge one. So, how, so we know, uh, you know, in, in well, Obviously, the stronger the intermolecular forces, the greater attraction there is. How does that affect that particular liquid property, right? So as the intermolecular force strength increases for that for a particular molecule or species, does that make that liquid property uh, greater or lesser? Those kinds of things. Um, also, we're going to look at temperature. So we, we've talked about, you know, with increasing temperature, we're increasing the atomic and molecular motion, which kind of counteracts the intermolecular forces. So we want to say, hey, if we increase the temperature, how's that going to impact this particular liquid property based on disruption of those intermolecular forces? Hey, and we'll throw in a couple new terms for you. We also want to look at adhesive versus cohesive forces. Liquids are in contact with the surface of its container. So if I have a liquid inside a beaker, inside a test tube, inside a capillary tube, inside a burette, right, or inside a, maybe a pan that you're heating up or inside a copper bowl, we have to think about, wait a minute, these water molecules, you know, most of them are in contact with themselves, but the ones on the outside are in contact with whatever the molecules are that make up the surface of the container. Uh-oh. So we have to think about, not for all the liquid properties, but for some of them, we're going to throw these terms in. What are adhesive versus cohesive force strengths? We'll qualitatively look at that. Um, I'm going to do that in more detail on the next board, but pretty simple to think about. Adhesive, think about adhesive tape, right? Tape sticking to a wall or sticking to your forehead or your eye. Uh, tape face, right? And cohesive togetherness, right? So we'll see adhesive forces are those between the liquid and the molecules of the surface it's in contact with, right? How sticky are they to each other? And cohesive forces are between the liquid molecules themselves. Let's take a look at a picture of that on the next board. Let's go. So for adhesive and cohesive forces, I, th I think it's pretty straightforward, right? So again, cohesive forces are forces between the liquid molecules themselves or with each other. Right? So let's say we've got some surface here, whatever that surface is in black, and then some liquid in blue, whatever that liquid is. So we've got lots, let's call these blue circles the liquid molecules. There's a whole bunch of them, right? What are those uh, forces of attraction between themselves, the intermolecular forces? Hydrogen bonds, LDF only, whatever it is. Right? Depends if it's polar or nonpolar. So those are what we call cohesive forces. Good, good, good. All those intermolecular forces. I erased my molecule. Can't let that happen. Now, adhesive are the forces between those liquid molecules and the molecules that make up the surface it's in contact with. So let's call these black ones here whatever makes up that surface. It could be glass, a metal, whatever it is. So any forces of attraction, repulsion, whatever that is, in between the liquid molecules and the surface 
right? That's adhesive. So the stronger those forces of attraction, the more the adhesive, more adhesion or stickiness there is of the liquid with the surface. That's going to impact some liquid properties we'll find, right? And then the stronger they are between each other, the stronger the cohesive forces, the more that liquid likes to stay with itself, right? So there's certain liquids that avoid surfaces, right? If the, if the cohesive forces are way stronger than the adhesive forces, the liquid likes to stay together and away from the surface. But if the adhesive forces tend to be really strong or stronger than the cohesive forces, that liquid likes to spread out on that surface, right? It likes that contact. Let's take a look at, let's list up the liquid properties we're going to look at in a series of videos, and then we'll just take them one at a time. All right. All right, so here's the four main liquid properties we're going to look at, okay? Viscosity, which I think a lot of you have a general uh, experience with in everyday life. Uh, surface tension, I'm pretty sure you've all heard of that, both of those. Capillary action, if you've taken biology, you're probably familiar with capillary action. And then evaporation and boiling, which we've talked about before quite a bit, especially in first semester general chemistry or, or uh, intro chemistry. But we're going to look at it in pretty intense detail this time and actually put some quantitative uh, equations together. Yay, we're going to drive some equations. Uh, these first three are, are a little bit quicker. I'll go into some detail on them and have some fun with it. We'll do those in this video. And then evaporation of boiling, we're gonna we're gonna put some meat and potatoes into that one. So we'll we'll do that in a separate video. Not that you have a choice. Oh. All right. So let's look at viscosity first. One of my favorites. Viscosity. So what do you think of when somebody says viscous? Do you think oh honey? You know, think motor oil. You know, things like that. Um, in lab, glycerol, which we use to lubricate. Um, like rubber stoppers with holes in them where we have to insert a thermometer or glass tubing. We use that as the lubricant, but it's really, you get that on your hands, it flows real slow. It's like glub, glub, and it gets all over your hands. And you're like, Bleh! <laughs> right? And again, glycerol is that, uh, I think it's three carbons with an OH, an alcohol group on each one. So it has like that triple hydrogen bonding, super strong intermolecular forces. So, so liquids with really, really strong intermolecular forces have really strong cohesive forces, right? So they tend to get real sticky and they just don't flow over a surface quite readily. Unlike ones with weaker intermolecular forces, you know, like, like ethanol or something, right? It just, blah, 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 it just flows real well. So again, viscosity is, if you want to identify it, is the resistance of a liquid to flow, right? You'll see different ways to phrase that, but you get the point, right? So the more viscous a liquid, the less likely it is to flow readily. What affects that? Well, remember, we're looking at intermolecular force strength and temperatures, right? So obviously, as the intermolecular force strength increases, the cohesive forces increase, the liquid's more attracted to itself, it's not going to flow as easily. So really big molecules with high London dispersion forces, like glycerol with lots and lots of hydrogen bonding, things like that. Uh, temperature, of course, as temperature increases, it disrupts those intermolecular forces more. And so it disrupts those intermolecular forces, and that makes the viscosity lower. So it's opposite. So intermolecular force strength and viscosity are proportional. As the strength of attraction goes up, the, re the viscosity, resistance to flow, goes up. But as temperature increases, viscosity is inversely proportional. Oh, you got to think about that. So the warmer it is, the less viscous the, it is, the flows more. Okay? So things, you know, one of my, well, when I was a kid, so I, I was born in Minnesota. I live in California now, but I was born in Minnesota. And it, when it get really cold, one of my favorite things was honey. Oh my gosh. So honey is super viscous, right? I probably shouldn't do this. It's going to get all over the place. But as a kid, I mean, you can see, whoop, let me turn that, uh, you know, let me turn that around so you can see it, right? So see how that just flows? Oh, I used to, um, <laughs> so good. As a kid, I used to just eat the honey. I put it, it was so cold, right? the honey was super viscous. So I'd scoop it in a spoon, and you could turn the spoon over, and the honey would just be like, oh, and you'd be like, oh. Sometimes it would even solidify oh, the, the things you remember from childhood. Mm. Now, motor oil, if you change your own motor oil, you'll see these numbers on them, right? See that there's a number before the W. A lot of people call that weight. I've seen people call that W for winter as well. And you see a number after it. 
So at first, the higher the number, the more viscous the oil is, right? So the stronger its uh, cohesive forces, the thicker it is. Think of it that way. Um, so when you pour, you know, higher number of water oil, it's, it's, it's harder to flow. So the first one, think of it for like um, cold startup temperatures, right? And the second one for higher temperatures. So, for example, with this first number here before the W, like if I'm in Minnesota, I'm trying to start a car. It's really cold, so you, you don't want a super viscous oil sticking. It's all gooey. Ugh. So you want a lower number, right, with a lower viscosity. So that flows a little better uh, on a cold startup or something like that, right? So lower numbers are better in colder temperatures. But if you're in this other number is for like higher temperatures. So I'm in California now. It's hot, right? So higher temperatures, less viscous, right? So you tend to want a higher number if you're in hotter temperatures on the right. Um, so that it's more viscous, right? So as it, it heats up and heats up and it's, man, we've had months in a row, you know, 100 degree Fahrenheit uh, temperatures and stuff. So we want a higher number of motor oil, higher weight, because it's more viscous and more likely to stick the in, to the internal components and things like that. Right? So you can research. It's kind of fun to look through what these numbers mean. The numbers before, more for, again, for like a cold startup. Lower numbers are better if you're in a cold climate. And then the later num the, the other number is the higher number, the more viscous it, is, it, viscous it is at higher temperatures. So if you live in like Southern California, you want higher numbers. Right? So I just found this in my garage. Pretty simple stuff, right? So let's move on to the next liquid property. Let's look at surface tension, which you, you probably run into before. Um, so official definition, right? So you take a liquid and it's in contact with the surface. Does that liquid spread out on the surface? Okay. Well, the liquid molecules have cohesive forces. They like to be together. So to pull those liquid molecules apart and spread them over a the surface requires energy, right? So the energy it takes to it take that liquid and spread it out or increase its surface area, right, over that surface, that's the surface tension, right? And, and there's quantitative numbers to that. We're not going to worry about it, okay? Now, the way to think about that, there's really weird things I remember because, like I said, I uh, was born in Minnesota, so lots of canoeing. And a lot of times, you know, in the morning I go out and I'm canoeing and I see these little bugs, right, just running across the surface of the water. I'm like, what? <laughs> right as a kid that freaks out and i would look at it because with a canoe you, you're silent you're like, Shh, you can sneak up on blue herons and turtles and things so i'd see these little water bugs literally i could almost touch them and where its little limbs touch them the surface of the water the water indented it made a little like a little pit right but it wouldn't sink which is really fascinating so you'd think it would, it would sink in the water, but water has really strong hydrogen bonding, right? It's really hard to pull it apart. It has a pretty high surface tension because of those strong intermolecular forces. So it would hold, right? So, or, or to, to sink something in water, you gotta, you gotta take that water, separate the water molecules out and spread them out over the surface of that object. That requires energy. Really, it's gonna come down to a couple things. Temperature, of course, and then the cohesive force strength of that liquid, whatever it is versus the adhesive force strength of the liquid with the surface it's in contact with, like, right? Like you, you, you wax a vehicle and put the water on it, the water beads up all over the waxy vehicle. So, so, but if you have dirty vehicles like mine, that water just spreads out on the surface. So there's something about the nature of the wax and the water that causes water literally to burn up, beat up almost into spheres, like, like water off a duck's back. <laughs> right? Let's take a look at scenario number, number, not number one, A. So if the cohesive forces, the molecules of the liquid themselves, attracted to themselves, are a lot greater than the adhesive forces, right? So take a look at this picture. So blue's the liquid, black's the surface. In this case, the liquid's more attracted to itself than it is to the surface. So the liquid will pull together, right? It'll beat up. You'll probably see that beat up like, like uh, on a freshly waxed vehicle. So if the cohesive is greater than the adhesive forces, the liquid molecules want to be with themselves, they will pull up, pull together into a lower energy shape or beat up on the surface. And I'm pretty sure you've all seen that, okay? So you get, and in this kind of scenario, how would this happen? Why would the adhesive forces be so weak? Well, if you have, remember, insolubility, like dissolves like, 
right? So polar likes polar, nonpolar likes nonpolar, but nonpolar doesn't like polar. So if I have a surface that's nonpolar, like a freshly waxed vehicle, uh, the, the wax on the ducks, on a duck, I think ducks, I'm not a biology guy, but ducks have this waxy surface to it. Uh, you know, a lot of these uh, plastics and things like waterproof tents, waterproof clothes, you'd have a nonpolar surface. And if I have a polar liquid, like water, it'll just beat up and it can just roll right off. Right? You're going to pay for that, though. Let's look at a scenario where it's opposite, where the adhesive forces are greater than the cohesive forces. What do you think is going to happen? Right? The neatest thing is like outer space, right? You get a perfect sphere. It's not really in, I guess the surface that's in contact would be space. That's just weird to think about. But it goes into that lowest energy space. You get these perfect spheres floating around. It's really neat. I love to go to outer space. I want to so bad. I want to go to Mars. All right, let's flip the coin here. Let's say the adhesive forces, the attractive forces between the liquid and the surface are greater than the cohesive forces, the attraction between the liquid molecules themselves. Well, in this case, the liquid molecules go, hey, you know, we like the surface. We want to max out the surface area and spread out, right? Woohoo! So that liquid is going to be wetting the surface, right? Woo! Spreads out real good. Um, sometimes we'll see this in... Um, Chemistry, when we're cleaning burettes and pipettes, and sometimes if you run water through it and you see uh, beads and things like that, it means it's nice and dirty. But if it wets the surface and it spreads out real nice, that means you've got it nice and clean. So in this scenario, this could be a scenario where, say, for example, the surface is polar and the liquid is polar. All right, so they're very similar uh, in their polarities, and it has very, very strong adhesive forces, or nonpolar, nonpolar, right, those kinds of things, right? So let's take a look at what impacts, you know, you can see the result of surface tension, right? But let's take a look at intermolecular force strength and temperature and how that impacts it real quick. And then we'll look at, now capillary action is, is kind of a subset of surface tension because it depends on surface tension quite readily. But we'll do capillary action as a kind of a, a whole separate uh, liquid property. And if you've taken biology, that probably makes a lot of sense. So let's look at the effects of uh, intermolecular force strength, the cohesive forces, and the temperature. Hopefully it's pretty obvious for you. All right, let's polish off uh, surface tension here. So obviously as the cohesive forces increase as the intermolecular force strength increase the surface tension is going to increase uh, now whether it beads up or wets out uh, obviously depends on what the adhesive forces are right um, so you always have to compare what surface it's on that's that's going to be a huge factor uh, temperature uh, the effect of temperature is pretty universal though because as the temperature increases you're increasing the atomic molecular motion oh it's disrupting those intermolecular force strengths uh, so that means it takes less energy to spread it out. Right on, same, same effect with viscosity, right? So surface tension is going to decrease as the temperature increases, as did viscosity, right? So, so surface tension and viscosity follow kind of the same qualitative parameters with intermolecular force strength and temperature. But surface tension requires a little more thought because you really have to think about what surface it's in contact with. So let's, let's look at an, kind of an application of this where we're in lab and let's look at this concept of it like meniscus formation capillary action all these fun things all right my biology friends capillary action we don't do this typically in chemistry a little experiment but you probably have done this in biology where you take like a little vat or beaker of water or something like that and take these these little glass tubes open on both ends and stick them in and you see the the water rise up you're like whoa and <laughs> you can test different diameters of capillary tubes and whatnot. It's kind of fun, actually. Stick it in there and the water creeps up. Right? You put it in, it just goes up, 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 up. It's kind of, it's fun. So what happens here? So if we've got a glass capillary tube and water, turns out in that situation, the adhesive forces are greater than the cohesive forces. The water's more attracted to the glass than it is itself. So what that means is the water creeps up. It pulls, it's, it's pulling up the sides, right? And that actually decreases the pressure below the meniscus there. You get that concave meniscus, right? You ever, I don't know if you can see that here. It's not a capillary tube, but, right? You can see that curved Right? You see that curve in meniscus there? It curves down because the water is creeping up on the sides there. It creates that curved meniscus. And of course, 
We read from the bottom of that meniscus with the burette reading cards. But that decreases the pressure a little bit below that meniscus, and atmospheric pressure pushes the liquid up, right, to compensate for that pressure difference. And then, obviously, if you have a thicker, a, a wider, a, a, the diameter's bigger of a capillary tube, there's less contact between the liquid and the surface of the glass, so it doesn't pull up quite as high. So you don't get such a pronounced, I'm going to change that meniscus. The meniscus is not quite as pronounced. It's there, but it's not quite as pronounced. So the wider it is, the, the, the less intense that meniscus. And it doesn't pull up quite as high, right? So the, the, as the diameter of that capillary tube decreases, the water level actually increases in that scenario. Now, what I want to look at on the next board, I think that you're probably familiar with this at least, but what if we put a nonpolar liquid like mercury inside there? Oh, right, where the cohesive forces would be greater than the adhesive forces because mercury, if it's nonpolar, is not attracted to the glass. You see a very different scenario. And the meniscus looks a little different too. So let's take a look at that and see how different it is compared. And I'll compare and contrast the two. All right. So again, this particular one, if you've got adhesive forces greater than cohesive forces, you get this concave meniscus, all right? And the thinner, and, and it actually rises above, see the level of water in the vat here? It rises above it. And then the thinner the diameter, the higher up it goes. Let's take a look at the opposite scenario. All right, you ready for a different scenario? What if we have liquid mercury with a glass capillary tube versus water with a glass capillary tube? Oh, right? So in the water, right, water's more attracted to the glass, so you have stronger adhesive forces than cohesive. And so that pulls the liquid water up, right? It pulls it up the size. It goes, woo, the water molecules, we want to be with glass more. So you get that concave meniscus like we saw before, and it pulls the liquid up the capillary tube, right? So the, the level of the water in the capillary tube is higher than the level of water in the vat there, or beaker or whatever it's in. But if we had, say, for example, liquid mercury, which I'm not going to let you do in lab, <laughs> but it'd be a lot of fun. Now, mercury is obviously not red, <laughs> okay? But uh, I didn't have the color of mercury. But what you'll see in this scenario, because the mercury is not attracted to the glass at all. Very, very weak adhesive forces. So in this case, the cohesive forces of the liquid mercury is way greater than the adhesive forces between the mercury and the glass. So the mercury is like, no, keep away. We don't want to be in there. So it pulls away from the glass. Okay? So what you see is the formation of a convex meniscus. If you've ever read a barometer, right? See the barometer and you see that level of mercury there and it has that little curve on the top there, that's your convex meniscus. That's what, that's because the mercury is pulling away from the glass, right? Whereas the water pulls towards the glass because it'd rather be sticking to the glass. And the other interesting thing is the level of the mercury, right? Because the cohesive forces are greater than adhesive, adhesive forces would be below the level in the vat, the opposite of what you'd see over here. Eh, kind of fun to do, right? So a little bit of liquid properties, viscosity, surface tension, uh, capillary, capillary action, and then I threw in there the different types of meniscus uh, formations you'll see in lab, right? Anytime you're reading a burette or, uh, you know, you're using a pipette with some kind of aqueous-based solution or, or water, um, you'll see that concave meniscus, which is ever so familiar in a chemistry lab. Uh, and again, some of you may or may not, I, I guess by the second semester of general chemistry, you should have read a burette and seen that concave meniscus uh, that mercury forms when it's inside a glass tube. All right, so uh, it's getting a little long. So what we'll do, we'll do um, evaporation, uh, look at how intermolecular force strength and temperature affects evaporation. We'll look at boiling versus evaporation, um, molar heat of vaporization, all that fun stuff. And we're going to put some numbers to that. Rock and roll, guys.